Hello, my name is Rich McHugh, and I'm going to be leading this workshop on high flex instruction. Uh, just so you get a little bit of background about me, I have a Bachelor of Commerce degree, I've worked as a systems administrator, and I have a master's degree in education focusing on educational technology. So here's a quick outline of what we're going to cover. And just to start with, in our recent Digital Scholarship Commons workshop, we had learners participating from around the world, including face-to-face -face in Victoria, BC, from across Canada, one person from Chicago, Illinois, from Lagos, Nigeria, as well as from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And global participation like this has been a beneficial side effect of the work done to make our workshops accessible to learners from their dorm rooms during the COVID-19 lockdown. So the COVID-19 pandemic was the catalyst for revamping our makerspace workshops so that they could be delivered not only face-to-face, -face, but also online via video conference software. We're now offering hybrid flexible or high flex workshops so that both on campus and remote learners can participate in our active learning workshops, whether they be face-to-face -face in our library, remotely via video conference, or remotely on their own schedule using fully online self-directed learning resources. We initially anticipated that our HyFlex workshops would be relatively short-lived and that we'd return to offering our on-campus flipped workshops in fall 2021. However, many students continue to take advantage of our video conference and self-directed workshop options. Feedback from learners indicate that this is not only because of COVID-19 concerns, but because HyFlex helps them better manage family responsibilities, manage mental health issues, as well as support out-of-town learners. During the fall of 2021, 75% of our HyFlex workshop learners participated via video conference and 25% participated face-to-face. -face. So what is a HyFlex active learning workshop? Most commonly, people who've heard of HyFlex think of it as being face-to-face -face and video conference online at the same time. But HyFlex doesn't require an online video uh, component. We try to do this with all of our workshops, and ideally HyFlex workshops are created to enable learners to work on their own if they need or desire. But for instructors running HyFlex workshops who do not have a teaching assistant, I'd strongly recommend that they be all face-to-face -face or all Zoom and not trying to combine the two because the cognitive load for the instructor is just too high. In flipped learning classes, students typically complete instructional work at home using videos and exercises to begin to learn new concepts and skills. And then face-to-face -face class time is then devoted primarily to activities to build on the knowledge and skills from their pre-class homework. The teacher is then available to assist and guide students who need help during the activities uh, in face-to-face -face time. So why HyFlex? HyFlex Workshop provides students with flexible, seamless engagement no matter where, how, or when they engage in the course, whether it be due to sickness, remote students, or family responsibilities. So creating HyFlex Workshops. First of all, know your audience. Good to ask what they want to get out of the workshop so that you know. You never know the different uh, backgrounds and, um, and needs that people have coming into the workshop. As well, central to the HyFlex model is the principle that no matter which instructional path a learner pursues, whether it be face-to-face, -face, video conference, or self-directed, the HyFlex workshop should lead to the same learning outcomes regardless of the path. And learning objectives should be smart. And by smart, we mean specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based. So here's one example of a smart learning objective. At the beginning, we have the time-based. In the middle, we have the specific, measurable, and attainable. And at the end would be the relevancy. So we first start off by creating the self-directed instruction and activities. Then create face-to-face -face instruction based on the self-directed instruction and activities. And lastly, create face-to-face -face activities if the self-directed activities don't work as well in a face-to-face -face setting. And put as much of the instruction or lecturing 
components into the pre-workshop assignment so that the vast majority of face-to-face -face time is spent doing hands-on activities. One thing to beware of is the curse of expertise, especially if you have significant expertise or experience in the area of the workshop that you're creating. It's often difficult to remember what things or skills that you'll need to explain in detail. Uh, to guard against this, I'd recommend beta testing your workshop with a trusted novice so that you can get accurate feedback. Anecdotally, uh, just so you know, I created this workshop and it's probably the one that I suffered the most from the curse of expertise from and had to do significant revamping once I got feedback from some of my peers. So flip teaching tips. Start off with a big idea. What is, what is the big idea that's going to capture the imagination of your learners at the start of your workshop or help them solve a big problem that they have? Be excited. Instructors who are passionate about a topic or at least excited about it are typically more effective in helping their learners uh, than non-excited teachers. Try to be a guide on the side as much as possible rather than the sage on the sage. So get your participants actively engaged in skill development as quickly as possible. Remember, learning is not a spectator sport. At the beginning of a workshop, ask participants to introduce themselves and specifically ask them what they hope to get out of the workshop. Try to make sure your workshop activity is directly relevant. You can do this by encouraging participants to use their own data so they can tackle one of their own projects or allow participants to work at their own pace and choose the activities that they want to complete so that they can get what they want and need out of the workshop. So high flex teaching tips. When you're working with the audiovisual equipment, especially wireless microphones, make sure that they're plugged in and turned on for example, before using Zoom, it can be finicky if you don't have things turned on before you launch Zoom. Uh, test it out with your teaching assistant to make sure the audio is coming through clearly and that you can hear them in the classroom. And make sure you have enough time uh, to do that testing so you're not late in starting your workshop. A key ingredient for an effective high flex workshops that are taught both face-to-face -face and video is for the instructor to be supported by a TA. And the TA can monitor online participants and call attention uh, to you when there are questions in the online forums. The cognitive load of instructors who split their attention to teach both face-to-face -face and video can be overwhelming. During the hands-on portion of the workshop, learners work through the activities they've chosen at their own pace, with the instructor circulating through the makerspace to check on learners, and also checking in with the online learners, of course. There's a wide range of equipment that can be used to facilitate high flex workshops. So if the equipment hasn't already been purchased for you, you'd want a computer, of course. An external camera is great because you can point it in different directions more easily. A wireless microphone, and we use the Rode Wireless Go, and a sound system. Every teaching method has strengths and weaknesses, and high flex is no different. Some challenges are remote participants have to have internet access to fully participate. Hands-on activities for some tools can be difficult or impossible to do without access to uh, those physical tools. And it can take extra time to create high flex workshops. And leading high flex workshops can be difficult to do well without practice. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, teaching without a teaching assistant can be very difficult. So in conclusion, the HyFlex workshop format has been an excellent framework that has allowed our makerspace to transform from a fully online workshop delivery during COVID to a hybrid HyFlex model. HyFlex also allows us to effectively and efficiently serve many learners who in the past just couldn't attend workshops due to sickness, family responsibilities, or mental health issues. Pandemic or no pandemic will continue to offer our workshops in a HyFlex format to better serve our university community. So it's hands-on time, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions.